The Akatsuki, one of the most famous organizations in the entirety of anime. You know them, you love them, but do you know what they stand for? See, the beauty of the Akatsuki to me, and most likely to you as well, is that each of the members in the Akatsuki are very unique. There's no Itachi Shisui situation where they're basically just the same person in different clothing. Every member represents a unique backstory in a unique set of beliefs. And in fact, they're all so unique that usually this leads to a lot of them butting heads. But even though they all bump heads, they do find ways to work together in order to achieve the eye of the moon plan but also the beauty of them all being different is that each of the members of the akatsuki can represent something different as a whole that is to say members of the akatsuki can represent entire notions with their personalities and today's theory that we're going to talk about today is how each member of the akatsuki represents a different reason to go to war at least that's what this theory states but before we get to theorizing on anything guys please for me like this video subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell and if you enjoy other anime that's not naruto then boy oh boy do i have a brand new page for you i just created a brand new youtube page called the weeb commander and on this channel i talk anything that's not naruto bleach one piece hunter hunter attack on titan mha jjk you name it i talk it so if you want to see more of my face talking about those chinese devil cartoons that you love then go ahead and drop a follow on that page or maybe you're looking for content that isn't about anime i also run a different page called nc gamer 23 where instead of talking anime i play video games and a page called hammers collection where instead of talking anime i unbox massive things from it so recently in a video of mine about shikamaru we pondered on the fact as to whether or not there was ever a good reason to enter into war as war itself represents the loss of thousands of lives even in the smallest situations however whether or not you or i think that there's any good reason to enter into war that doesn't mean that people have an identified many different reasons as to why somebody would want to enter into war. And today's theory states that every single member of the Akatsuki represents a different reason one would want to enter a war. Now this theory was created a long time ago, ironically in a YouTube comment section. So if you got any ideas for Naruto theories, put them in my YouTube content so I can get the kickback. Regardless of where the theory started, the commenter then laid out every single member of the Akatsuki in what their individual reason for entering war would be. And while I agree with the sentimentality that each of the members of the Akatsuki does represent a unique reason to go to war, I don't necessarily agree with the reasons that are assigned. Therefore, today we'll be going over each of the members of the Akatsuki, what they represent in terms of a reason to go to war, and why I believe that is a good placement or a bad placement. And in the case of a bad placement, I'll tell you what my opinion on their reason to enter war would be. Think of this video as kind of a philosophical deep dive into the psyches of every member of the Akatsuki. So let's open with one that I sort of agree with and sort of disagree with. Pain and Conan were lumped together. You see, the reason that the commenter gave for Pain and Conan for entering war was in order to establish peace. That is to say that a nation would invade another nation or the rest of the world in order to establish a peaceful government after the war. I know fighting a war in order to achieve peace sounds like kind of backward logic, but it's something we actually talked about a lot recently in our video about Shikamaru. And here's the thing. While I do agree with this to a certain extent, I also disagree with it to a certain extent. To Pain and Conan, there has been two separate Akatsukis. There was the Akatsuki formed with Yahiko, and then there's the Akatsuki after the death of Yahiko that now exists under Obito. At least that's the way I look at it. Because if you look at the Akatsuki before Yahiko's death and after Yahiko's death, they're entirely different organizations. Both the people in the organization and what they stand for is changed almost completely. And therefore, if you're talking about the original iteration of the Akatsuki with Yahiko, I believe that Nagato and Konan represent peace. It was the reason that the Akatsuki was originally formed in the first place. The Ame orphans wanted to establish a peaceful world. This is because the Hidden Rain had been used as a battlefield during the Second Great Shinobi World's War, and the Ame orphans had become, well, Ame orphans because their parents were killed in the Crossfire. Because of this, the Ami orphans grew up wanting to strengthen the Hidden Rain and also establish a peaceful ninja world. Therefore, within the confines of the original Akatsuki, yes, I believe that Nagato and Konan represent the reason to go to war of wanting peace. However, when you look at the Akatsuki after Yahiko's death, I can't agree with that sentimentality anymore. And considering the fact that we're going to be talking about members of the Akatsuki who came into the Akatsuki after Yahiko's death, I feel like it's best to look at Nagato and Konan after Yahiko's death. See, yes, obviously the thing that Nagato preaches is pain. And then once everybody in the world feels pain, true peace will be established because everyone will understand that they never want to lose anybody around them ever again, and they'll all be equal in their suffering. So you could say in a pretty grand and simplified view that Nagato was trying to establish peace through communal suffering. However, I genuinely don't believe that if you're looking at Nagato and Konan, that that would be the true reason that they would represent for going to war. I think better than anything, the reason that 
represents those two is loss. Ironically, and this isn't me saying anything bad about this commenter or this theory, is that the one reason that's most common that people decide to go to war was never listed amongst the Akatsuki members' reasons. On this list, we have things like religion, money, peace. And while in a grand sense, those are the things that probably move nations, loss is what moves an individual, and individuals are what moves a nation. While Yaiko is still alive, Nagato and Konan never would have fallen into the hands of Obito. However, upon losing Yaiko, they decided to take the Akatsuki to Obito. And genuinely, what they were trying to establish while in the Akatsuki, their mission of pain, was to impart loss upon everybody on Earth in order to make them feel the pain that they had felt. And while this may not be the biggest motivator for the beginning of a war, because before a war starts, there's not a whole lot of loss on either side, loss is what keeps wars going for decades. Ironically, loss is also something heavily talked about between Nagato and Naruto, because loss has everything to do with the cycle of hatred. The cycle of hatred dictates that while we're in a war, if you kill my brother, well, I'm not going to forgive you until I kill your brother. And as a war progresses, more and more people are scarred on each side by the opposing side, and therefore, hate grows. And as this hate grows, the divide grows bigger between these two sides, and the war never has an end in sight. And while loss is usually what maintains the furiosity of war, it has absolutely started it in the past. The loss of Helen of Troy is what led to the fall of Troy. The Boston Massacre is what started the Revolutionary War, because a misunderstanding led to Americans dying. And once that misunderstanding led to those American deaths, everybody who knew somebody who died in that massacre started to hate the British, and thus loss stoked the flames of war. So while yes, I do believe Nagato and Conan initially joined the Akatsuki in order to establish peace, but the Akatsuki that we're talking about is the Akatsuki that Nagato and Conan brought to Obito. And that Akatsuki, they joined because of loss. I realize I'm saying joined a lot here, but like I'm not saying this is why they joined the Akatsuki, I'm just saying like they joined for a core central value and that core central value is representative of them. Regardless, the next entry on the list is a lot easier. Hidan. Hidan's a layup. Hidan represents religion. And outside of the fact that Hidan is religious, this is also very in touch with his reasons for joining the Akatsuki. See, Hidan joined the Akatsuki because he thought in the Akatsuki he would meet a lot of people he would be able to kill and offer up to Lord Joshin. It's not that Hidan believed in the Eye of the Moon plan. In fact, he was probably the most speculative of it considering the fact that it largely relied on the religion other than Joshinism. In a religion that they were kind of making Madara like a Jesus figure that was gonna be a savior to the earth. Also, he Don going along with the Eye of the Moon plan doesn't make a huge amount of sense when you consider the fact that in Infinite Tsukiyomi, he wouldn't be able to offer anybody up to Lord Joshin. Like, he'd be able to dream about it, but he wouldn't physically be doing offerings to Lord Joshin, therefore that would make him a bad Joshinist. So he simply joined the Akatsuki to get the chance to kill people. Therefore, he joined the Akatsuki to give favor to his god and also, technically, spread the word of Joshinism. See, because we actually learned in Akatsuki Hidan, the Akatsuki light novel, that Hidan took any opportunity he could to spread the word of Joshinism to anybody who was interested. In fact, he once convinced a little boy to join. The true irony here, though, is that Hidan is one of the lesser members of the Akatsuki, yet his reason for entering war is probably the most common. Religion has been the foundation of the majority of wars in all of history. The Spanish Inquisition, World War II, all 16 Crusades. For as long as people have believed in the Sky Daddy, they've shed blood for said Sky Sky Daddy, because in this world, people want to be correct. Nobody on this earth likes to be wrong. And for humans, there is no stage grander that you want to be correct on than which Sky Daddy you believe in. Because the majority of Sky Daddy books say that if you believe in a different Sky Daddy, well, you're not going to meet Sky Daddy when you die. Therefore, for thousands of years, people have waged wars to do things like convert other people who don't believe in their Sky Daddy or reclaim what they believe to be religious sites. This is the case with Jerusalem and all of the Crusades. And Hidan's actually my favorite entry on this list because he perfectly encapsulates this reason for entering war. See, Hidan's religion is violence itself. Hidan's religion states that the best way to service his god is to kill those he's close to. Yes, the goal of Joshinism is to make friends and then kill them and offer them to Lord Joshin. And the nuance of Hidan as a character is not thinly veiled. Religion, for as long as it's existed, has been violent, divisive, and those who believe in it have been willing to kill to spread its word. But enough about Hidan, let's talk about his partner. Kakuzu. Kakuzu also represents a very basic reason for going for war, but a very common one. And Kakuzu's reason for going for war very much lines up with his personality. See, Kakuzu's reason for going to war 
is money. Now, I agree with this reason for Kakazu 100%. Kakazu had been a bounty hunter for roughly 100 years before he joined the Akatsuki. It probably wasn't that long, I'm over-exaggerating. But Kakazu was incredibly focused on money, specifically how much certain people cost if he caught, killed, and turned them in. Kakazu, even after joining the Akatsuki, would majoritively base his missions off whether or not he would be able to find people who were worth money that he could turn in. This is why Kakazu and Hidan were sent to kill the 12 Guardians, because every single one of the 12 Guardians had a high bounty on their head in the underworld that Kakazu wanted to cash in on. And in reality, this is actually why Kakazu ended up joining the Akatsuki. He figured if he joined the Akatsuki, he would bump into a lot of people with high bounties on their heads in the underworld. And because he would now have a network of people that he worked with in the Akatsuki that would be able to point him in the direction of these valuable bounties, he would essentially have a network of people who could help him bring in as much money as possible. That is to say that technically, even though Kakuzo was just recruited to the Akatsuki because he was violent and very strong, he joined because, well, he saw money in it. And ironically, this is a reason for war that isn't talked about that highly. See, money is usually the true motivator that anybody enters a war, though nobody ever says it. No nation's gonna be like, ah, shit, we need money, let's go invade Poland or something like that. So usually thinly veil their invasion or defense with some of the other reasons we'll talk about today. But usually at the end of the day, the true reason is money. And not just for the things that you can pillage from the country you're invading. On a grand scale, wars usually cost way more to a government than they bring back. So why would money ever be a motivation for war? Well, the money doesn't come from the outside, it comes from the inside. A little thing called the military industrial complex. Ironically, a thing that pulled our entire economy out of a rut in World War II. You see, prior to World War II, our economy was awful. Between a stock crash and a dust bowl happening simultaneously, America was going broke. That was until a new multi-billion dollar industry opened up, war. And with America having as much oil and steel and bullets as it had, it was able to sell these things to other people and itself, technically through government contracts, and make a lot of that money back very quickly. But since we're talking about lying, the next entry on our list is Kisame. Now, the commenter states that the reason that Kisame represents for entering war is to expose the lies or hypocritical nature of a nation. And while I agree with this to a small amount, I also, once again, kind of disagree with it. The point that the commenter is trying to get across here is that Kisame represents frustration with one's own nation over hypocritical actions. Or that Kisame represents other nations being upset with a country showing one side of itself, but actually operating in a different way. And this is derived from the fact that Kisame defected from the Hidden Mist after finding out his sensei, Fuguki, the original wielder of Samehara, actually was betraying the Hidden Mist. Essentially what happened with Kisame is that Kisame was sent on a mission with two Cypher Corpse Ninja. Now these Cypher Corpse Ninjas had incredibly important information, and Kisame was to escort them from point A to point B so they could relay said information. However, Fuguki stated that if they ever got cornered, that Kisame should kill these two so the information never leaks. And you'll never guess what happened! So upon being cornered by enemies, Kisame goes on to kill the two Cypher Corp Ninjas, essentially fulfilling his duty to the Hidden Mist. However, upon returning to the Hidden Mist, it's actually revealed to him that Fuguki, the man who told him to kill his own comrades to protect the Hidden Mist, has been selling the Hidden Mist secrets. And thus, Kisame becomes disillusioned with the Mist, considering everybody there to be liars. And therefore, upon killing Fuguki for leaking the secrets of the Hidden Mist, he steals Samehata and defects. And in this moment, I do agree that Kisame represents disagreeing with the hypocritical ways of a nation. That is, if you're to scale Fuguki out to the entirety of the Hidden Mist nation. However, I simply just believe that Kisame is actually represented by a different motivation for war better than exposing hypocritical truths. I believe the true reason that Kisame actually represents is loyalty. See, Kisame is a fiercely loyal person, probably the most loyal person in the entirety of Naruto. He didn't blink twice at the prospect of killing his own teammates for the betterment of the Hidden Mist. And even after becoming disillusioned with the Hidden Mist, he still killed Fuguki for selling its secrets. On top of all that, he is fiercely loyal to Itachi, who he sees as his superior. And once again, unfortunately, the commenter here has missed one of the largest reasons that wars begin. Again, loyalty. See, obviously certain things need to pop off for a war to start. An accidental shot fired across a border, a politician murdered. And while these things will start a war between two places, maybe, what truly scales a war up is loyalty. Loyalty, also known as alliances on a global scale, is what makes a war between two countries 
a world war. Italy and America have never had political beef. However, because they existed on different sides of World War II, they did for a little while there. But America would never invade Italy and Italy would never invade America. But because Italy was aligned with Germany and America was allied with the rest of the allied forces, now Italy and America had beef. Countries are often dragged into wars that aren't their own because countries with similar mindsets create alliances between each other. And with those alliances is loyalty between sets countries and therefore even if the bullet wasn't fired into your country or your politician wasn't murdered your country can be pulled into a war because of loyalty and this is the true reason that i believe kisame represents kisame also doesn't necessarily believe in the eye of the moon plan however after realizing that the hidden mist wasn't loyal to him as he was loyal to it he defected and that's when he was happened upon by the akatsuki and because he was such a loyal person he gave his loyalty to the akatsuki as a whole and the members of it that he was loyal to like itachi and therefore kisame was kept in the akatsuki largely because of his loyalty to some of its members but since we're talking about the people that kisame was loyal to next up on our list is Itachi. Itachi's is relatively straightforward and I agree with the commenter in this circumstance. Itachi's reason to enter war is to protect your country or nation. This being obviously because Itachi murdered his entire clan in order to protect Sasuke and he existed within the Akatsuki to feed back news of the Akatsuki to the Hidden Leaf. Therefore existing within the Akatsuki to act as a double agent to feed information back to his country or nation but also put into the circumstance because he wanted to protect his little brother. And while I do agree with this general sentimentality I believe that the scope is a little bit smaller than country slash nation. Obviously, Itachi did have allegiances to the Leaf. This is why he chose the Leaf instead of his Uchiha clans, and that loyalty did push him to commit the Uchiha Massacre. But the true motivator behind the Uchiha Massacre wasn't Itachi's loyalty to Konoha. It was Sasuke's safety. And more than anything, I genuinely believe that that is the reason that Itachi represents. Itachi represents fighting to protect your loved ones. Often wars are sprung upon nations that aren't necessarily ready for it. Look at Poland in World War II. And because your nation is being invaded, people who usually wouldn't spring into action for a war are forced to in order to protect the ones they love. Well, obviously the people who were fighting in Poland against Germany were fighting for Poland and against Germany. The majority of the people who joined up most likely did so to protect their loved ones. Because while nationalism is great, actually it's not, most people usually feel greater feelings for their family. But some people might even enter wars offensively to protect their loved ones. That is to say that countries or individuals will launch wars, not be on the receiving ends of a war in order to protect their loved ones. Should a country or an individual see that a different country or a different individual is doing something that might hurt their loved ones down the line, an offensive war might be initiated. And I believe better than anything, that's exactly what what Itachi represents. Itachi was used as a weapon in order to snuff out a flame of potential danger, and he did it in order to protect Sasuke. But while we're talking about Sasuke, let's talk about the guys that him and his wife killed, Sasori and Daedara. They both killed themselves. I know. But why are Sasori and Daedara paired together? Well, the commenter did that, and therefore I'm kind of forced to as well. Technically, I would have both of these people represent different things, but here we go. I would like to preface that the reason given for these two is the reason I disagree with the most. The reason given for these two is that they wanted to create a long-lasting diplomatic change and be known for it. Basically stating that by Daedara using bombs in different countries that he was acting as a pseudo terrorist and sorcery using the puppets of old kages represents politicians being puppets to the system and therefore by trying to turn these governmental bodies on their heads data and sorcery were trying to implement diplomatic change that they would be infamous for and while technically i kind of understand it it ignores a lot about who these two are as characters and these two actually are very similar in terms of their core personalities well i could absolutely understand how you can look at data and see a terrorist because he uses bombs in civilian areas that's ignoring the core of his personality. Also, Sasori wasn't using the third Kazekage as a puppet, as a political statement or anything like that. He was just strong and Sasori wanted a strong puppet. Fortunately for me though, I have read Akatsuki Hiden and Akatsuki Hiden gives us a really good look into both Daedara and Sasori just as people, not as Akatsuki members. And we realize throughout the duration of their chapter that A, they have a lot of respect for each other, and B, they're both incredibly artistically driven. And this is actually where the respect for each other comes from, because they both understand that they're artists and therefore are trying to achieve the perfect form of their own art, they respect each other. So what's the reason that they would represent to go to war? Is it art? No. 
though I'm sure people have gone to war over art before, what I'm talking about is a bit more general. The reason that I believe sorcery and data will represent is culture. But what do I mean by culture? It's such a broad term. Well, unfortunately for all of us, what I mean is relatively broad. See, through their actions of trying to perfect their art, data and sorcery represent a version of culture that they're trying to implement onto the world. Sorcery is always trying to perfect and strengthen his puppets. And to sorcery, the creation of these powerful and useful puppets is an expressive form of art. To Datara, Datara is always trying to find the perfect kind of clay to incorporate his chakra into to use his explosion release Kekegenka because Datara sees art in explosions. And before we land the plane on this point, it's important to note that both Sasori and Datara were forced into joining the Akatsuki. And with that point in mind, I'd like to make a small redirection. You see, Sasori and Datara don't truly represent a reason for going to war. They represent the byproduct of war, specifically, a war lost. Look at places like Japan or even South Korea. Upon having wars in these places, like the conclusion of World War II or the Korean War, these places became heavily Americanized because of the influence of America. McCarthy and politics after World War II basically reformed the entire Japanese government and economy. And the same could be said for South Korea after the conclusion of the Korean War. But in a sense, these clash of cultures are actually a war in their own. You see, for a long time, America has not been the greatest country on Earth. There's next to nothing that the United States leads the world in, except for one very important thing, culture. Truly things like American music and Hollywood movies seep into the rest of the world without a singular bullet being fired. And thus without putting troops on the ground, America asserts its importance on the world stage. And this is exactly what Data and Sasori represent. They are a physical representation of the force of culture. While their culture expresses through violent means like creating puppets or creating explosions, at the end of the day, they are enforcing their culture through artistic expression on the rest of the world around them. And therefore they have entered war in order to seep that culture and that art into other nations. Because here's a little fun fact, until 2022 when Russia invaded Ukraine, no two countries that both had McDonald's had ever been into war with each other. But enough about going for a culture win in your Civ 6 playthrough, next up we have Zetsu. I actually very heavily agree with the reason given for Zetsu, which is lineage. To expand on that, Zetsu's reason for entering a war is because your grandparents or your parents fought that war with those people, and therefore you have to fight that war with those people. An example of this would be warring houses in Japan's feudal era, or warring houses in really any country's feudal era. The best anime explanation of this reason is basically Hashirama and Madara. They fought because their fathers fought, and their fathers before them fought, and their fathers before them fought, all the way back to Ashura and Indra. And therefore, in order to protect the honor of their lineage, they continued in their war against the person that they've been warring against for generations. And to expand upon this even further, wars have been waged in order to reclaim land that was once owned by ancestors many generations ago. Like the Crusades, or whenever England and France fought each other because they owned little parts of each other at all different times. And for Zetsu, this actually makes a lot of sense because Zetsu's entire purpose is in order to bring Kaguya back. Zetsu basically creates the entire Akatsuki and the Eye of the Moon plan to bring back his own lineage in Kaguya. So with Zetsu, I agree, 100%. Nothing to say there. And with Obito and Madara, I once again kind of half agree. See, for Obito slash Madara, it stated that they wanted to force their idealistic ideas onto other countries to create a forced coexistence. And from a distance, that sounds a lot like peace. And that's because it basically is. And while that might be what Obito and Madara are saying out loud, how they want to create this version of heaven where this is forced coexistence, I don't truly believe that's their real motivation. While I believe that that might be the motivation that they believe they have, at the end of the day, what they're truly meant to represent is delusion. But I can't fault you if you agree with the commenter here, but let me explain myself. So yes, obviously Obito and Madara want to use infinite Tsukiyomi to create a heaven-like experience for everybody on Earth. And by creating this heaven-like experience, everybody will find peace in coexistence. And while the average reader would look at what they're trying to accomplish and what they're saying out loud and agree with this as their reasoning for going to war. If you peel back a singular layer of the plot or story, you'll see where I'm going. You see, Madara and Obito are bad guys. And obviously every member of the Akatsuki is a bad guy minus Hitachi, but their ideology is largely based in the wrong way of approaching and or thinking about things. Madara, though he states he's trying to create a truly pacifistic union between all people in coexistence, revels in war. 
And while they speak on how this will be a heaven-like existence, what they're not realizing is this heaven-like existence comes at the cost of being human. Essentially, to be human is to have free will. And to strip somebody of their free will in exchange for security isn't humanity. Humanity is to struggle, to fight, to mess up, and to die. But the beauty of humanity and what makes human existence so individualistic and gorgeous is the fact that we get to learn from those experiences and that we have a finite amount of time. Therefore, making those experiences that we experience every single day all the more important because we never know how many more we're gonna get. So to strip humanity of that timeline, of these mistakes, of these imperfections, takes everything that's important about humanity away from it. If you got to eat ice cream every single day for 24 hours and you never had to sleep and you never gained weight, that would be great for the first two or three days. But the reason we enjoy ice cream or cookies or things that are bad for us is because we know they're bad for us and we try to enjoy them in moderation. Once something that we enjoy becomes mundane, well, what are we gonna enjoy anymore? And therefore, Madara and Obito had the delusion that this space that they would create of forced cohabitation would be heaven-like. And the combination of power and delusion is incredibly dangerous yet incredibly common. Because I'll touch on what we touched on when we talked about Hedon. Nobody wants to be incorrect. However, unfortunately, a lot of people are. But when you hand those incorrect people a lot of power, unfortunately, they get to push that incorrectness on whoever they deem fit. Because I think it was best stated when it was written centuries ago that history is written by the victor. That is to say, the person with the most power decides what's correct and what's incorrect. And in the circumstance of the fourth great shinobi world's war, Madara and Obito had the most power and therefore they got to push their delusion down upon the rest of the world and delusion is a very far-fetching and grand reason because within delusion you can see every other reason we talked about the delusion that your sky daddy is the best sky daddy and therefore you should be in the other country killing the other people who believe in a different sky daddy so you can convert them the delusion that economy built on the backs of war is the correct thing to do for your nation the delusion that your culture is the best culture and you should implement your culture in every other their nation. The delusion that by killing the man across from you, you're not killing somebody else's loved ones. The delusion that just because your ancestors fought a war, you also have to. I opened this video by referencing something we talked about in a recent video. That regardless of the reason, there's almost never a good reason for thousands of people to die. Which is why we need delusion to ever start a war. Which is why it's so fitting that Obito and Madara's reason is delusion, because it's the reason that sits above all other reasons. Just like how Obito and Madara sat above all other Akatsuki members. But what do I know? We're just talking about anime, right? If you guys agree with the reasons I've assigned to every single member of the Akatsuki, tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, hit that noti bell. The only real reason to ever enter a war is for anime waifus.